welcome to our to, to our online broadcast of English National Ballet's Emerging Dancer Competition. I'm Sarah Blong, your host for today's online stream, coming to you live from Sadler's Wells here in London. Now in its eighth year, this evening's competition is all about celebrating the young dancers of English National Ballet. Six finalists will each perform this evening, competing to take home the Emerging Dancer Award. But there is more. This evening will also include the announcement of the People's Choice Award winner and the Corps de Ballet Award. Now last year in a surprise twist, Cesar Corrales took home both the Emerging Dancer Award and the People's Choice Award. And Cesar is back with us tonight and he will be performing later on this show with his dance partner Katya Karnyukova. So make sure you don't miss that. Stay tuned for everything. Now stick around the interval especially as I am bringing you at home a few exclusive treats. During the interval, you'll have another chance to catch Curing Albrecht, our short dance film inspired by the iconic ballet Giselle, directed and choreographed by Morgan Runacre Temple and Jessica Wright. Now at the interval, you'll also have interviews with our finalists to get to know them a little bit more. So very much worth staying tuned with me during the intervals. I'm bringing you all the gossip, so it's got here is where you need to be. Now as ever, we want you to join in the conversation by commenting on Facebook, getting in touch on Twitter at ENB Ballet, hashtag ENB Emerging. Now I think it's time to get this show on the road, don't you think? In a moment, there'll be a short video introduction to the evening, and then we'll hand over to your host for the evening, which is the wonderful and iconic Arlene Phillips. I'm seeing you in the interval. Emerging Dancer is a great opportunity to put some spotlight on the members of the company. Some of them are very young and not often do they have the chance to perform as a soloist or principal. In English National Ballet we are always committed to reaching new audiences. It is essential for the future life of this art form that we continue to reach people that might not have seen ballet before. The beauty of an event like Emerging Dancer is that people get to know personally the artist in the company. I think it's a really good uh, opportunity to shine for them. That's why we do has so much. It's not just technique, it's musicality, it's artistry. Also, it's developing the individual, like personal artistry understanding. Most of the time in companies, you're cast for what you're cast for, and that's it. Whereas this gives you a chance to do something that you wouldn't normally do. So to be able to go there and do principal roles is a wonderful opportunity. When I hear about emerging competition, I was thinking one competition inside of the company. Well, but now I can think like it's not a competition, it's more like a show. I would like it you know, to perform in front of a lot of people doing one part of the day, one solo. 
For a company, it's most important to nurture talents because you sometimes get very young people that are really talented and you have to help them in the process of growing up as dancers and also as a human beings. It is really difficult to get better, but for me it's very fun to find what I can do to get better and that's what makes me feel excited every day. All six um, dancers this year are very charismatic, so they are just uh, great individuals, very different, um, all of them, from each other. That will give a, a beautiful opportunity to see many different styles of dancing and repertoire. The whole point of the competition is, is to gain experience and for people that are in the lower ranks to be able to do those big principal roles and, and actually get the feeling and how, how it is to be a principal dancer for a day. I think it's an acceleration of the process to be able to, in a very short time, go over steps and work really hard. It proves you as a dancer and it proves your will and it proves your ability to work even harder. It's a huge learning experience. What's really special about the rehearsal process is that we're coached by our colleagues. I think it's also a great way to collaborate with different choreographers and really improve your versatility as a dancer. Being chosen as one of the finalists for the Emerging Dancer, it's a great opportunity for me to be on stage and to, to perform. And it's a great time to get to know my partner on a different level, also to rehearse ballet that I haven't done before. It is always rewarding to see young talent go through the ranks and develop in, inside English National Ballet. Um, so to see young people that come and that uh, grow in the company and, and develop into great principal dancers or soloists and get um, pieces created for them and the recognition that that comes with, um, it's just a joy. Good evening and welcome to our audience here at Sadler's Wells and those live streaming at home. I'm Arlene Phillips and I am delighted to be here to support English National Ballet's 8th Annual Emerging Dancer Competition. The Emerging Dancer Competition is a fantastic platform for the rising young dancers of the company and an important part of the continuing investment in creating the stars of the future. Our six finalists tonight were nominated by their colleagues at English National Ballet to take part in the competition and have been coached by their fellow dancers for their performances tonight. So this is a very special and supportive environment for them developing as artists. This evening would not be possible without Tamara Rojo and her artistic team, our music director, Gavin Sutherland, and musicians from the ENB Philharmonic. Everyone behind the scenes, including our wonderful venue, Sadler's Wells. You, our audience, including everyone watching online via the live stream, and the Emerging Dancer competition is generously supported by Sue and Graham Sloan, so thank you very much, everyone. And of course, we have our wonderful judges. Let's welcome them. Laura Connor. <laughs> Dima Grischeff. Marguerite Porter, MBE. Artistic Director of English National Ballet, Tamaro Rojo, CBE. Alfreda Thorogood and Graham Watts. 
last but not least this evening, it's really about the nominees. So let's hear you cheer for each and every one of them. Aitor Arietta. <laughs> Isabel Brewers. <laughs> Rina Kanahara. <laughs> Madison Kiesler. Guillem Menezes and Emilio Pavan. We are in for a fantastic evening and we hope you're going to make lots of noise to support these incredible dancers. The, ev the evening will start with three classical pas de deux where the nominees have been paired with each other. Once these have been performed, you'll see some short films to tell you more about our nominees, followed by their contemporary solos. Our judges will then have the very difficult task of choosing this year's winner of the Emerging Dancer title. There'll also be two other awards presented this evening. The winner of the People's Choice Awards voted by the EMB audiences throughout the entire season and the winner of the Corps de Ballet Award chosen by the EMB artistic team. After the interval, we are also delighted to have performances by last year's emerging dancer winner, Cesar Corrales, and his partner, Katya Kanyukova. Chuckers to all the finalists and we hope you enjoy the performances. Our first couple, Isabel Brewers and Emilio Pavan. Thank you.
Please welcome to the stage Madison Keeler and Guillaume Menezes, performing Party Dare from La Sylphide.
Please welcome to the stage Rina Kanahara and Aitor Arietta performing their Pardida from Esmeralda.
Weren't those performances fantastic? <laughs> and now the finalists will be performing their contemporary solos. And before they begin, we'll see some short film to introduce the dancers individually. And we really hope you enjoy seeing them on film. Thank you. I was living in Romania, uh, I was seven years old. My mom took me to watch the Swan Lake at the National Opera House in Bucharest and I fell so in love with the beautiful dancers on stage that I knew straight away I wanted to become one of them when I grew up. I'm a very optimistic person, which has been a savior for me throughout my training and my career. I've had so many comments along my journey about my facilities and not being able to make it as a professional dancer. but. I always try to just see those comments as a little mountain to climb on my journey to becoming a dancer. I can't really put into words how it feels when I'm on stage. I'm just transported into a different world and turned into a new character. I get this amazing, liberating rush of feelings, but at the same time, this extreme focus and heightened awareness of everything that's around me. But when I'm on stage, in the moment, there is nothing I can think about apart from really indulging in every step and living every movement. When I was younger, I played football and did karate. And my sister actually did ballet, and so did my mom. I was a little bit intrigued and my mom took me to a ballet class. The first thing that really got me hooked on ballet, I think was watching YouTube videos of ballet stars like Carlos Acosta and, and Baryshnikov. And that's what really got me hooked and made me go back and keep doing classes and working hard. I'm performing well, obviously primarily for the audience, but in the back of my mind, I always have my family. I do it also for myself. I really enjoy being on stage. I feel a lot of energy and I feel warmth from the audience. It's just a comfortability I feel. Every day I enjoy the camaraderie with, with my mates and that's what really makes my job easier is having a great bunch of friends and being able to, to laugh and joke around and not take things too seriously. Something that inspires me is the fact that the possibilities are endless. Yes, I was born with this physical body and I have to work in a technical way with what I've been given, but you can always mold and shape and continue to grow and learn within what we do. And that's a huge inspiration. I think at the end of the day, I'm performing for the audience. I don't think that this is an art form that you can just do by yourself. I do love it so much, but I do it and I work so that I can share it. And without them, there would be nothing. My hopes for when I'm on stage is that I'll be able to be fully present no matter what I'm doing. I want to be very honest with that. So when I'm on stage, nothing else exists. I'm in that world with the music, with the audience, and hopefully that honesty can carry out into what the audience is watching. Please welcome to the stage Isabel Brewers performing Adrift. Thank you. 
please welcome Emilio Pavan performing Proporioception. Please welcome Madison Kiesler performing We Move Lightly.
I moved from Brazil to England when I was 16 because I came to study at the English National Ballet School. I used to have a neighbor that used to be one of my best friends and she used to do dance classes. And I went to watch one of her shows. And when I saw the whole thing, like the costumes and the stage, it just fell in love with it. And I realized that I wanted to be a ballet dancer. I've got this thing in my mind that I believe that being a dancer is almost like role playing with your friends. So like, well, sometimes I'm on stage and I'm actually, I'm really enjoying myself and I don't even feel like I'm on stage because you, you get to act around pretending that you're like in a market in Turkey or you're a pirate. You just become someone else. When you're on stage, you're kind of just getting to this zone and you kind of forget about everything else. What I really want for my career is to be able to look back and, and feel like all the effort I put into to my work, it was all worth it and I, I had a good time. That's, that's why I dance. I started dancing when I was five and then I just fell in love and I started doing it every day. I can't imagine life without ballet because for now ballet is just everything for me. My dream was to become a professional ballet dancer. Now I'm here so I just do every day what I love. I don't struggle doing class every day. It's like the same thing as washing your face or brushing your teeth. It's the same for me. I'm trying to do better things every day, even if it's little things. And of course it's hard because some days you're so tired and you can't even do anything. But I think this is the moment you have to push. I love dancing on stage because I can be free and my job is to make the audience happy. And I mean, I can say that I can do what I want. No one is judging me. I can just be myself on stage. I used to dance bass traditional dance in my town, so my parents thought that for improve the technique for this, the ballet will, will be helpful, no? When I start, I only went with the girls, no? like playing with the girls. I realized that I, I like it to do, to do ballet, no? so after I, I went to Madrid, I started uh, dancing seriously, and after that I entered in the National Company of Spain with Lynn Tenier. I think every, every dancer wants to be a principal dancer, but it's more, more important to be a good person, no? and with this be a very good dancer, and after improve the technique and uh, other things. What I feel when I'm performing, it's, it's freedom. No? Dancing in front of a lot of people and a big audience, this is amazing. No? It's the most beautiful thing in the, in the world for a ballet dancer, I think. Please welcome Guillem Menezes performing Flight Mode. Welcome on board this Ryanair flight. May we have your attention while we point out some of the safety features on this Boeing 737-800 aircraft. Please remove headphones during this demonstration. There are eight emergency exits, each marked with a red exit sign. Floor path markings along the cabin aisle will illuminate in darkness and guide you to the nearest exit in an emergency. There are four main doors, two at the front of the cabin, one left and one right, and two at the rear of the cabin, one left and one right. There are four overwing exits in the center of the cabin, two left and two right. Please note the nearest exit to you, which may be behind you. To fasten your seatbelt, insert the metal end into the buckle. To secure, pull on the loose end of the strap, and to open, lift the buckle cover. In the event of a sudden loss of cabin pressure, 
individual oxygen masks will drop automatically from the panel above your head. If this happens, remain seated. Pull down firmly on the mask to start the flow of oxygen. Place the mask over your nose and mouth and breathe normally. Don't worry if the bag does not inflate, oxygen is flowing. To secure the mask, pull one end of the strap. Adults traveling with young children, please attend to your own mask first. Your life jacket is stowed in a pocket beneath your seat or in the panel above your head. In the unlikely event of landing in water, remove the jacket from its packet and place it over your head. Bring the strap around your waist, clip at the front, and secure as the crew are now demonstrating. To inflate the life jacket, pull down sharply on the red toggle. There is a mouthpiece for further inflation or deflation and a light to attract attention. Do not inflate your life jacket inside the cabin as to do so will impede your exit. Further information may be found on the safety card which is displayed within the area you are seated. Your captain invites you to read this card carefully before departure. Please now ensure that your seat belt is securely fastened, tray table is in the upright and locked position, armrests down and window blinds open. We recommend for your comfort and safety that you keep your seat belt fastened throughout the flight. There is a call bell, reading light and fresh air vent in the panel above your head. Portable electronic devices such as tablets and mobile phones in flight mode may be used throughout the flight. Please select flight mode now. Laptops must be stowed in cabin baggage under the seat in front of you or in the overhead locker for taxi, takeoff and landing. We would like to remind you that smoking is not permitted. Thank you for your attention. Please sit back, relax and enjoy your flight. Welcome Rina Kanahara performing Blind Dreams.
Please welcome Aitor Arietta performing Self. I didn't know anything could be so perfect. The lights of the mirror ball, a thousand swirling eyes. I dream of relaxing nights. When contentment comes upon me, I have to find ways to destroy it. I slide the hairs in the coffee cup up its walls, click the kettle on. While it rushes and hisses, I dance with spiders, one of those spindly ones, all legs and angles made up of lines, is feasting on its prey caught up in a mesh. The kettle clicks off. My skin creeps and my head hurts. I need to suffer more. I was feeling too comfortable for a second there, I guess. I had had no money for a few days and was desperate for a cigarette. I remembered that when I was younger, I'd hid some in a tin full of movie stubs and limited edition chocolate bar wrappers. I found the tin and inside was one single cigarette. Throwing the stuff aside, I placed the cigarette carefully on my dry lips and patter caked my pockets in a panic, located lighter and flicked the flame into existence. I drew deeply, tobacco and paper crackling. My alveoli filled, my blood vessels roared, my scalp tingled and stomach turned. The hairs on my arms stood up, and so did I. Lunging headfirst for the window, flung open in one motion, drinking down the black, cool air as my mind shrieked. I can't feel my arms. Now I'm here. This is not my town, but then again, where is? These are not my people, but is anyone really?
Let's say thank you to all our dancers for the wonderful performances. And now, our judges will leave the auditorium and as they go, let's think about the very difficult decision they're going to have to make. Thank you to our judges. And now for the rest of us, it's time for the interval. So please make your way to the foyer for a drink. You have 20 minutes when we come back for a very exciting second half. Thank you. Wow, 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 what a fantastic first half. If you're just joining us, we're broadcasting live from English National Ballet's Emerging Dancer Competition at Sadler's Wells here in London. I'm absolutely blown away and I do not at all envy those judges. Now the auditorium here is really gearing up as it's not long till we find out who will take home the Emerging Dancer Award 2017. Now we've just witnessed breathtaking performances from our six finalists in their pas de deux and their contemporary solos. I think you will agree that they have not made it easy for the judges at all. It's quite clear while those, why, the, why those six are the finalists. Now tonight, not only are we experiencing wonderful talent on stage, but what about the wonderful music being created by our fantastic orchestra this evening? Isn't it absolutely amazing? Now English National Ballet Philharmonic, led by music director Gavin Sutherland, are as always doing a stellar job in bringing the performances to life. Be more from them in the second half, can't wait. Now, thank you all so much for joining us on Twitter and Facebook. Well, mainly on Facebook. I'm gonna read out a few of these comments, but I think one second, I'm gonna grab my phone. Been sending me down in the uh, side to side of stage. Got lots of people on on all of this social media. So let me just read out a couple of these for you. So we've got Simona Maria Valescu. She's saying wonderful. I agree. Vincent Hanton. This is a long one. Just bear with me. Here we go. This is what the dance world needs. Competition with your colleagues. Keeps dancers pushing all the time. Wonderful. Only the ones who take risks will see where they are. Not only do they do they, do they they do, they do the steps, but do whatever they do to perform. I agree, absolutely fantastic. Let's just read one more. We've got uh, Sable Blade is saying, love the, the, um, the immediate emotive impact of the contemporary pieces. I agree, absolutely stunning. You can see the really contrast in their talent and versatility. Now, please continue with the conversation on Facebook and Twitter at ENB Ballet, hashtag ENB Emerging. Tell us, who do you want to win and why? Because we love hearing from you. Now for something a little bit different. Earlier this year, English National Ballet were proud to release a short dance film called A Curing Albrecht. It was inspired by the iconic ballet Giselle, directed and choreographed by Morgan Runeker Temple and Jessica Wright. Now, it was commissioned by English National Ballet and produced in partnership with Manchester International Festival. The short film was filmed on location in Manchester's spectacular Victoria Baths and features a cast of young dancers from Greater Manchester. The story begins with a young man who checks into a, a bespoke institution, hoping to be cured of his, of his inability to stop dancing. This is A Curing Albrecht.
We loved creating this project with our friends in Manchester and would like to send, take a moment to send our condolences to everyone affected by this week's tragedy, tragic events. Our thoughts are with you. Now, if you're inspired by tonight's performances and you fancy catching the company live on stage, well, let's take a moment to see what's next. English National Ballet will present the world's greatest love story, Romeo and Juliet, of course, full of action, humor, and drama. Rudolf Noriev's award-winning production was created for English National Ballet in 1977, and the company has since performed it worldwide to critical acclaim. Shall we have a look? Why not? Here we go. Now, Romeo and Juliet will be performed at the Royal Festival Hall in August and the Bristol Hippodrome in November. You can visit ballet.org.uk for more information on how to buy tickets. And I, I've seen it. It's absolutely incredible. You really should get down. Now, we should get back to this evening, to the matter in hand. It's time to get to know our emerging dancer finalists a little bit better. Here are I tour Isabel, Rena, Madison, Guillaume and Emilio in their own words, discussing their inspiration and what motivates them to be the best that they can be. Enjoy. Being chosen as one of the finalists for The Emerging Dancer, it's a great opportunity for me to be on stage and to, to perform, which ultimately is what we all, all want to do. The whole point of the competition is, is to gain experience and for people that are in the lower ranks to be able to do those big principal roles and, and actually get the feeling and how, how it is to be a principal dancer for a day. I've got so much respect for all my friends that work with me because everyone works really hard and the fact that they actually have nominated me is, is a real pleasure. When I hear about emerging competition, no, I was thinking one competition inside of the company. Well, but now I can think like it's not competition, it's more like a show. I would like you know, to perform in front of a lot of people doing one pas de deux, one solo. What motivates me as a dancer is actually watching the older dancers and, and learning from them and implementing that into my, my career. And I really enjoy watching, watching old dancers because I think everyone has their own little spice that they add to, to their performance. No one's really exactly the same. I guess after I watch a performance, I, the next day I go back in and put that into my work and, and use that as my drive. I like doing every exercise, every step, everything like more than one time to improve and to learn. You are rehearsing and you can see it in the stage like one month later. It helps you to work more and improve more and learn more. And I know the, the brain sometimes and the head is tired, but you want to do it, no? so that's, that's the thing. I think what I appreciate the most and and dancers as their attention to detail because in the end of the day the ballet is an art form so what I think makes it special is how much effort you put into it and how, how much attention you pay to, to your dance. What I really want for my career is to be able to look back and, and feel like all the effort I put into to my work it was all worth it and I, I had a good time that's, that's why I dance. I think every every dancer wants to be a principal dancer, but it's more more important to be a good person, no? And with this, be a very good dancer, and after improve the technique and other things. I guess what I hope to give back to ballet is inspiration for other dancers who watch, because ultimately that's how I started, and and I'm happy with what I do, and and I'm passionate, and I hope that. If I perform and someone watches, that resonates to them and they're able to, to take some inspiration and passion from that into their own career and just keep the ballet world turning. The question of staying motivated from day to day is an interesting one. Sometimes maybe it's a performance I saw the night before, maybe it's someone else in class, but I think the most important thing that motivates me is remembering why I chose to do this in the first place. It's remembering that I do believe ballet is a powerful art form. 
I think the Emerging Dancer competition is such a good reflection of English National Ballet's vibrant and unique energy and, and its ability to push classical ballet into the 21st century. It's a huge learning experience. What's really special about the rehearsal process is that we're coached by our colleagues. I think it's also a great way to collaborate with different choreographers and really improve your versatility as a dancer. I don't struggle doing class every day. It's like the same thing as washing your face or brushing your teeth. When I feel very tired, that's the moment where I have to push and I always try. If I do things better than what I did yesterday, even if it's a very little thing, that's what makes me happy. And it is really difficult to get better, but for me it's very fun to find what I can do to get better. And that's what makes me feel excited every day. I love watching amazing technicians and it really puts me on the edge of my seat when I see someone who's just dancing with complete freedom. But I think most importantly, I love watching someone who can really convey emotion. What I hope for in my career is that I'm able to make an impact, that I'm able to do work and perform in a way that will really touch people, touch the audience and help them feel something or think in a way that they hadn't before. My goal is to be a principal ballet dancer in this company and to be able to achieve that goal. I just have to try my best every day. When I think about what qualities I appreciate in a dancer, the first word that comes to mind is honesty. I'm not someone that thinks you need to have a perfect body or be able to only do technical things because I believe that what we do is much more important than that. I'd love to become a principal dancer one day, but I think ultimately I just want to finish my career knowing that I stretched my limits and pushed as far as I could to become the best dancer I could ever be. How inspiring. I mean, as I said before, it's quite clear why, why, why these six are the finalists for the Emerging Dancer Award. Now, you're tuning in from all over the world and we're loving it, from Japan to Florida, South Africa. We've got tweet more Facebook comments. Somebody's saying, um, it's amazing, P young people talking about their love of, bra of ballet, bravo, and we hope that they've got long careers. Me too, absolutely incredible. Now shortly we'll be ready for the second half of Emerging Dancer, which will, which will feature a performance from last year's winner of the People's Choice Award and Emerging Dancer Award, Cesar Corrales. If this performance is anything like any of his performances last year, it's going to be insane. I can't wait. And then we'll find out the winners of the Corps de Ballet Award, People's Choice Award, and the coveted Emerging Dancer 2017. Who's it going to be? I do not know. Well, all we can do now is stay tuned. So enjoy.
Welcome back to part two of our evening. Now, we begin with a performance from last year's emerging dancer and the People's Choice Award winner, Cesar Corrales. Since winning both these awards last year, Cesar has been promoted to first soloist and has been performing principal roles in Nutcracker, Le Corsair, and both contemporary and classical productions of Giselle this season. Here's a short video to introduce him, and then he will perform a pas de deux from Don Quixote with Katja Kanyakova. Winning Emerging Dancer was a very nice process. The best part was getting to work with other dancers and having our own dancers coach us and getting to do new ballets and doing different ballets. I think the last performance, the actual competition, was more of a having fun. I don't think I took it like a competition at all. I wasn't thinking about that. For me, it was really just the whole process of uh, working with each other, which was for me special. I was definitely very, um, very happy and humbled and grateful for winning both awards. Winning the People's Choice Award for me was a reminder that there's people out there that are very interested and that like being there and like voting and for sure it's very nice to have an active audience. The fact that I was live streamed, um, there's lots of people that couldn't make it to the performance and that were able to watch it you know, through online, especially my family. That was really cool. The way I started it out was by being inspired as well. I never tried to aim for winning anything. I just tried to work harder for myself and I compete with myself. I think that's the best way to achieve those kind of things. Once you're on stage, it's about you know having fun and dancing for whoever you want.
Well, let's say a huge thank you to Cesar and Katya. Don't you feel blessed seeing that performance tonight? And now I'd like to welcome on stage the woman that made all of this possible, Tamara Rojo. Thank you, Arlene. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here with us tonight. Um, I'm sure you're all as excited as I am, and I hope you agree with me that these are all extraordinary artists, and it's a pleasure to be able to share them with all of you tonight. We all are in English National Ballet absolutely committed to nurturing the artist in the company and hopefully to create the artist and the stars of the future. And this process, Emerging Dancer, is a very important part of this commitment. We're also committed to our vision, our original vision. We want to bring the best world-class ballet to the widest possible audience, wherever they are, whatever their means. And we want to thank you because we're able to do so thanks to you, our faithful audience that continues to support us on this journey. So thank you very much. I want to take this opportunity to thank each of the choreographers that allowed us to present their work today. Sidi Larvi Cherkawi for Adrift, Kirill Burlov, thank you. <laughs> Yes, he deserves it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kirill Burlov for Propri Exception. <laughs> Miles Thatcher for We Move Lightly. <laughs> Sebastian Kloborg for Flight Mode. Raimondo Rebeck for Blind Dreams. <laughs> and Alex Magné for Self. <laughs> now, what you've been all waiting for, the awards. <laughs> Our first presentation is the relatively new Corps de Ballet Award. We decided to introduce this last year because we want to recognize the individuals that make the hardest work in a ballet company, the corps de ballet. I am uh, incredibly privileged uh, to have one of the most committed, professional, and loving corps de ballet I've ever known, and certainly one of the most hardworking. I would love to be able to give all of them an award, but we had to choose one. So please allow me to introduce a little video that might explain why. Thank you. English National Ballet is a company that works incredibly hard and the main carrier of this workload is the Corps de Ballet. So I always felt that uh, it was necessary to recognize that dedication and the professionalism and the skill that it is to be a good member of the Corps de Ballet. We have been working very hard on, in fact, allowing um, freedom within this Corps de Ballet for the personalities of each individual to flourish. We're lucky in that you know, it's, we're all doing a job that we love and that we enjoy every second of, but to have that moment of, of recognition and to have the corps de ballet acknowledged as a great thing is, is pretty amazing. This year's winner of the award is someone who my department have huge respect for. They have made a significant contribution to the work of the department, to EMB's youth company. The dancer brings a lot of qualities into the company. We have a varied repertoire now, and to see this dancer adapt to each and every discipline, it's really nice to see. 
generosity of spirit, wonderful stage presence. They're a very strong dancer and a very able dancer and very adaptable. This year's winner has really made an impact on those young people and in inspiring them. Their experiences with her will remain with them for the rest of their dance journey. This person is just a genuinely friendly, lovely, caring person. I feel that they've they're always willing to help others and they're always listening and they, they offer cuddles. It's really nice to have someone so positive all the time and around and I feel that you know, they brighten up the room. This dancer has shown consistent dedication. You can see the complete commitment in every rehearsal, in every performance. Also the work outside of the stage, the work with the engagement program in bringing young dancers in to the company and working with children, which is something that is just done out of love for the art form. I think it is incredibly admirable. I am delighted to announce that this year's winner of the Cour de Ballet Award is Sara Kundi. That definitely wasn't expected at all. <laughs> uh, Tamara, thank you so much. Um, what can I say? I'm blessed to do something that I love every day. It's an honor to be a part of this company. It really is. Um, I am amongst such talented and dedicated artists that drive me every day and make me want to be better and improve, not only as a dancer, but as a person. So. You know, I can't ask for more, and that's really, that, that really is touching to me. So, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> And now for our People's Choice Award. This is the award that our audiences uh, choose throughout the season. Um, they hopefully fall in love with one of our dancers and they vote for them. And this year's winner is Georgia Bold. I'm in complete shock also. Uh, thank you so much for whoever voted for me. I'm just really overwhelmed right now. I'm a bit confused, but thank you so much. Thank you, Tamara. <laughs> thank you. Everyone. Congratulations. Thank you.
And before I go on to announce the Emerging Dance Award, please allow me to introduce uh, to the stage this year's jury. Ms. Laura Connor. <laughs> Dimitri Grutschev. <laughs> Margaret Porter. <laughs> Alfreda Thorogood. Graham Watts. And also welcome back this year nominees. Aitora Rieta, Isabella Brewers, Rina Canejara, Madison Kessler, Guillermo Meneses, and Emilio Pavan. And this year, we have a tie. Oh. <laughs> so, this year, join winners of 2017 Emerging Dancer are Aitor Arrieta and Rina Canejara. happy to receive this prize, especially with him. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so I just want to thank our fabulous Arlene Phillips. Our maestro, Gavin Sutherland, and the EMB Philharmonic. <laughs> Laurent Leotardo, for the wonderful videos you've seen tonight. All the choreographers and mentors of the nominees. The judges. The dancers, <laughs> Woo! this beautiful theater, South as Wells. A special thanks to George Roger Handley for generously supporting the Corps de Ballet Award. And to Sue and Graham Sloan for generously supporting the Emerging Dancer Competition. And to all of you here and online, those that follow us on Twitter, on Facebook, all our followers and fans, thank you very, very much. This doesn't mean anything without you. Please come to see us at the Royal Festival Hall this summer, where we will be performing Nureyev's Romeo and Juliet. And then here at Saldes Wells in September, we will be bringing back our award-winning uh, version of Giselle by Akran Kam. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you to everyone here in the auditorium and everyone watching online. Don't you think this was just about the most exciting event ever? I do. Thank you. Woo.
I agree, Arlene. What an amazing, exciting event. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. That was incredible. I could keep watching, could keep watching Cesar every night. He's absolutely incredible. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Now, just to recap, we're celebrating three wins this evening. The Corps de Ballet Award, which was won by Sarah Kundi, and the People's Choice Award, which is voted for members of the public. That means you, was won by artist of the company, Georgia Bold. And finally, we have two winners of the Emerging Dancer Award, which is Aitor Ariata and Rina Kanahara. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Well, well deserved. Thank you so much to everyone who's been watching online. You've been all over the world joining us in London, which has been absolutely wonderful. You know how much it means to the dancers as well. If you've enjoyed this evening, then please make sure you go onto EMB's website, visiting ballet.org.uk. Find out when you can see them live and go and watch them live. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Sarah Blong. Have a lovely evening. See you later.